Hey folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraven U here for a slightly different sort of run. So this run that I'm recording is meant to go specifically with an article that I wrote for Thraven University today talking about the restore-based strategy for Awoken Primary. Um, this is something that Narninian and I have been working on, and he recently put out a really good video on it, and I kind of wanted to do a written primer as well as a run that really kind of breaks down some of the things associated with that. Um, so let's go ahead and hop into a run. Um, for the sake of simplicity here, let's just do Awoken and Stygian. The strategy that I'm going to do works with Awoken and any secondary clan. Uh, Stygian is probably the easiest, followed by Melting, but it works really well with all of them. Notably, we are going to reset if we do not get Rejuvenate to start with, because the whole point is showing off what this run looks like. So accordingly, I'm just going to double check and make sure that we have Rejuvenate to start with. Uh, and we do. So now we'll go ahead and evaluate the starting deck properly. So, we have two Crypt Builders, which is a heavy finisher and something to be good on the first couple of floors, and we have a very good rest of the deck for this sort of strategy. We have a card that lets us draw more restores, and we have two more things that trigger our champion. Uh, the start of this run is very good for a restore-based strategy. So when you're doing the strategy, you almost always take the floor 2 Merchant of Magic. We might not have to this time, because there's a floor 3 Merchant of Magic, but really we want to make sure that we have a good upgraded restore, preferably multiple upgraded restores, before the Daedalus fight, and specifically before this cavern. If we hit the duplication event on this cavern, you essentially win the run on the spot, and I'm not really exaggerating. If you get five additional free restores, your deck is insanely powerful. Um, notably, we don't have a hard Daedalus fight, but we do want to be taking Ember for Fell, in all likelihood, unless our deck is very, very, very good, or we get something like a Holdover Glimmer early. Otherwise, we're going to need to do something about all of those Absolvers or Purifiers, whichever one it is in that fight. Okay, um, we are on Sap Seraph, and Sap Seraph has a whole bunch of Shade Wings. So we will want something like a Holdover Glimmer or something else that lets us deal with the Shade Wings in the back row. We can brute force our way through it if we need to, but we would prefer not to. Great. Okay, uh, we have a couple of options here. I mean, two. Token of a Traitor will be awesome with our spam, and it's a way that we can help to take out Shade Wings. Otherwise, Icicle Fracture is something that we could use to set up, like, cool Crypt Builder-based turns, and it also lets us, like, not redraw cards like Train Stewards or Frozen Lances that are kind of bad. I think either way is fine. Token of a Traitor is probably worth at least 10 damage a turn come endgame, though, so I think I'm just going to take the Token of a Traitor. Ice Skull Fracture does very little on its own, but could set us up to do some cool things. But the cool thing we're trying to do is just, like, cast Restore a bunch of time. That's it. Um, this unit draft's pretty good. We don't really want an Awoken unit. We want one Stygian unit, and then we won't take any other units for the rest of this run. We want one Encant creature, one of the Sirens, and then we're good. So getting extra looks at creatures is totally fine. And we have a whole bunch of cards that will let us kill these things. I don't think it's going to matter too much if we turn on this trial. The token of a traitor also just makes it a joke. Alright, so the easy play is this, and then we get to do that, and kill one of these. And we get to do this, and kill one of these. Then the harder play is, do we put the Train Steward here, or do we put the Train Steward here? And to put the Train Steward here, it makes it possible to get Collectors on the middle floor a little bit easier. So, for example, just playing this here gets both of those. Now the rest of the turn is a little more interesting. We're not going to do a very good job of stacking up regen in this fight, and so accordingly I'm going to try to take some train stewards out of my deck so that I don't redraw them later. 
And here is Token of a Traitor doing absolutely ridiculous things. Alright, now in this second pass through of the deck, we're going to look to stack restores. Beautiful. I have one rest I have no restores stacked there. Okay, so I don't carry this over to the next turn. So we can just try to get either two damage or kill that front thing, which is worth five damage. Alright, we should have a lot of restores coming next turn. Which is good. We don't have a lot of oomph. Should. Should. Uh, 12 damage is exactly 67. They're taking three damage is better. Yeah, taking three damage is better than that. All right, so like three of the four bottom cards were restores there. That's okay. Oh, I also had two more damage than I needed to due to the token of a traitor. Uh, okay, so something about this strategy is that you don't want to take very many cards, and the cards that you take should have a very specific purpose. So, Razor Sharp Edge is a card that you're normally really excited about in Awoken at the beginning of a run. It's great scaling, especially if you hit Animus of Will. But, this card doesn't have Restore on it, so we're going to skip it. We're more interested in one of these two cards because they help us deal with Backliners. This means that if a Shade Wing actually hits our champion, it just kills itself. So it reduces the amount of damage that our champion will take by 15 per floor, and sometimes 30 per floor. That's really useful. The Vine Grasp could also kill Shade Wings in the last fight, but it would have to be upgraded, and we really don't want to waste upgrades on a Vine Grasp. Gold is precious, and that's why we skip so many cards, is so that we have enough gold to remove all of our starting cards. With this strategy, we're looking to remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards over the course of this run. We'll take the Pyre Shards. It consumes, so we only have to play it once. But then when you look at cards like these, come late game, this is so much worse than Restore, right? Restore does 60 damage, probably for free. And this card is doing 50 for 2, unless we sink resources in it. So we just skip cards of that ilk. Okay, here's the one unit that we need to win the run. We got it very early. We will now skip all other units for the rest of the run. Unless we're maybe offered a sap totem. We would think about taking that. Next we have to plan when we are going to try to get multi-strike on this unit. We can do it immediately, or we can do it later. So, in these first two floors, going to Merchant of Magics will probably be better than going to Merchant of Steels. Like, since this unit scales, and we're going to put almost all of our resources into a single floor, it doesn't matter that that unit's not particularly strong right now. So the way that I see myself going is left here, because I don't really have money to re-roll yet. So I think I just want to go left here, improve two restores. Maybe if we get a money trial, we'll go right here, but we'll probably just go left again and improve us restores again. Then we'll remove two cards here, duplicate a restore. Um, maybe do the same here. And then finally at floor six, I think will be the time that I'll actually upgrade my units. That's my, that's my current game plan. Alright. We go left, we click on the skip button. Very important. Gives us 10 more gold to work with. Alright. So, Emberstone goes on a restore. Plus 20 magic power and consume. Do I want that on a frozen lance now? Um, let's see. I'm looking at two... Or I'm looking at four easy removals, and then I'm looking at paying for some removals beyond that. I think I will go ahead and take that on this. It's possible I should take that on Crypt Builder instead, 
but this costs one ember and this costs three, and I might end up purging the crit builders too. I think I'll do that and re-roll. Feel again, ember stone, and these restores. I don't know that I want to spend more gold on another one of these purges. It's possible that I should put that on a restoration detonation. I don't really want those in my deck. They're fine, but they're just acceptable. They don't add regen. If I'm going to remove crit builders, maybe I do want to just do that. Okay, we've got a very powerful run going. With Token of a Traitor, I think this is totally fine to do. Even if we take some damage, it's fine. With this strategy, you almost always set up top floor. Um, Token of a Traitor just going to do absolutely disgusting things here. Now, this Frozen Lance is a little harder. We can either scale or we can just take out one of these things. I think I'm just going to take out one of these things. Possible taking out that was better, but this takes more immediate pressure off of me. Alright. So, we click on the cards. Now, we can pull a few Train Steward type things out of our deck in this rotation. So, we should probably do so. I'm hitting for 20 right now, so I'd like to do 5 damage to this unit. So let's go ahead and do that. This means a restore this turn is just lethal to that, and we're not even going to take anything this turn. Which is great. And again, when we can, get those train stewards out the first pass through your deck. Sixty. Now that shouldn't be necessary. Just go, yeah, 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 yeah. So notice how good these restores are when they're free. You still clear your ember up to do other things. All right, good stuff. See, since we have three rejuvenate, three regen stacked up, we don't even need to play all of these cards. But once we do, even though we're not doing anything explicitly powerful yet, we're already gearing up pretty well. Okay, so Wildwood Sap will help us survive the bosses. So we're going to take that early, but notably it doesn't trigger the champion. So it's good, but it's not great. And then, Offering Token is an interesting one. With two Crypt Builders, this is probably good enough to take. It gears towards the Encant Insan side of the deck and helps us get through Train Stewards and Frozen Lances until, that we've, until we've removed them. This is absolutely fine. It's also good with the Token of a Traitor. All right, at 185 or 195 gold, which way do we want to go? Um, Merchant of Magic and Merchant of Steel are both totally reasonable here. Building up the Pyre Health is nice, so that if a future trial goes a little bit awry, I have a buffer. Like, that's good. But I don't have a good double stack target yet. Well, I guess I could double stack this. That makes it probably fine to go left. Um, note with this strategy, I am comfortable waiting until like right before Fell to upgrade a unit if I can make the rest of my deck just really, really strong. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Alright, so I can remove Consume on my Wildwood Sap if I would like, and have a Wildwood Sap that does not exhaust. That's fine, but this is a lot of gold. I think I'm just going to go ahead and make yet another Restore free. And then I think I'm going to roll the shop. And you guessed it, 
we're gonna make yet another restore pre. We're kind of tired of seeing these surge stones. And then we're gonna start by removing a train steward. See if we can hit a duplication event and just go wild. We're not gonna pick the large shard, I can tell you that much. And the Heartstone's less good than normal, because we haven't already upgraded this unit. We're not too worried about sweeps or spikers or anything in the short term, because, like, we just encant and grow this. So I think I'm just going to take Blood for Blood. We don't expect the Pyre to kill very many units, but if it does, like, getting that health rebate is very nice. So note that I'm explaining everything very slowly for this tutorial, but if I was al if I was just playing this run by myself, I would already be most of the way through it. The average runtime when I'm playing this restore base strategy is like 30 to 35 minutes. Because once you get going, you just play all your stuff on the top floor and you click on restores and everything dies. It really just is going to be that easy. The beginning of the run has a decent amount of strategy in that, like, you have to choose how you are going to play things out. But when you start to get towards the tail end of the run, a lot of times it's just autopilot. Just, like, click and die. The hardest sort of decisions you have are, like, do I incant for two or do I cast something on another floor? Here I'm going to cast something on another floor because it potentially saves us a couple of life on our champion. But just look, like we have seven regen stacks already. We are doing great, great work in terms of killing some of this stuff. Arguably, I should have played the consume one there. All right, so this is what a mediocre turn starts out like. But once you have a little bit of card draw, you actually end up with very few turns that end up looking like that. And the second pass through your deck tends to be way better than the first. And this is why you want card draw. You want to just be able to grab a whole bunch of free or cheap cards and just spam them. And at this point, I'm just going to scale. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. We played six cards in one turn in the Daedalus fight. This is why this strategy is powerful, especially with the incant stuff that you're offered. Okay, you see these good cards that you would normally pick? Here, what we're going to do is click on the skip. And you see these cards? We already have everything we need to win the run, basically. So we're going to click skip. All right, um, now we have to choose whether or not we think we're strong enough to beat Bell by just taking card draw. The blood for blood means that we could probably get away with doing that. But we do still have a couple of crit builders that we might want to hard cast. So if this were any other fell, I would be taking card draw here. But let's just not like accidentally lose the run to fell while I'm making a tutorial. That would be embarrassing. We'll just take Ember. Now, when you're evaluating the map for the rest of the run, mostly what you're looking at is just removing cards that aren't named Restore. You start with the train stewards in this combination because like they don't even encant. And wouldn't you know it, we are just going to duplicate a starter card. We are just going to duplicate a free restore because it's just that good. I 
At 101 Pyre Health, I am comfortable taking this trial. We probably have to set up on the bottom floor for this trial, though, which is a little bit awkward. Like, we don't want to fight the boss or these things on the top floor where they're much, much stronger. Now, if I had two... Oh, I do have two sources of regen. This is one and this is two. It'll trigger end of turn. Yeah, I can, I can probably get away with setting up on bottom. A collector will be a little hard to get. Yeah, so just like this, our turn one has set us up really well for the fight. Play a restore. Play a restore. Play an incant card. Play an incant card. Get the collector. GG. Now, sometimes you do get turns that look like this, and it does suck. It happens. This is why you are trying to take everything that you can out of the deck, so that this sort of thing happens as infrequently as possible. We might still be able to get a kill on that, but it's not guaranteed by any stretch of the imagination. Luckily, those consumed frozen lances are doing some good work. Alright, so even before we play like six restores in this turn, we already had the boss dead. This is the power of restore. I think this is better than 25 gold. I will, I will go ahead and take that. Okay. Over the course of the run, you probably want one or two cards that are a little bit better than base restores in terms of the regen that they add. The downside of cards like this is that they require two cost reductions, or at least one cost reduction, and something like doubles deck, to really compete with restore. Since we already have most of these restores free, I'm comfortable picking this up. And none of these cards heal, wouldn't you know it? Normally, you're used to these cards being good. Not here. Unnecessary. Okay, so now we can go to a Merchant of Magic to upgrade the Awake, or we can just go ahead and take some more gold, remove two more cards. This is a close decision, but Cavern Events are neutral to beneficial, and this Pyre Health isn't good, and we have Blood for Blood to heal it more. So while this upgrades the Awake, the card removes are really valuable. So I think I'm just going to plan on going to this Merchant of Magic next. Going to this Merchant of Magic would allow us to go this way and duplicate an Awake, but I think I'm just all about getting these Train Stewards out of my deck. Alright, and there we go. Wouldn't you know it, the last Train Steward is gone, and now we can start working on things like Frozen Lance and Crypt Breaker. Hmm, lots of cards we could duplicate in the- oh, jeez, I, I just clicked on Restore. Wouldn't you know it. You don't even consider duplicating something like Wildwood Sap. It's just unnecessary. Alright, um, Spell Shield 2 is not super an issue, seeing as most of our damage is Restore-based. This boss can be a little problematic, but we should be fine. This is a top floor fight for sure, so that some of those stealth stacks can dissipate by the time we're up here. And since there's spell shield, we don't need to try to kill any of those things. Alright, we are not getting that collector. Just look at how consistent we are at just doing our thing. So this is, what, turn three of this fight, and we have 12 Rejuvenate, and we've scaled this Siren a bunch of times? Now, let's just go ahead and take one of those out with Token of a Traitor, rather than scale. Let's 
see. This can work the way that I want it to. One, two, three. And there we go, everything is dead. Notably, the way that I pushed that there also meant that I got to heal the fire. Scale twice? It mostly restores in the pile. It's probably fine to scale twice rather than try to take some spell shields off. Alright. We'll go one, two, three. Now, for this unit, I actually might want to take some spell shields off. We also want to kill those back units. With token of a traitor, if at all possible. I have Crypt Builder here. I don't have Crypt Builder here. 50% chance for token. Nice. All right. Now we're up to 16, 17, 18 restore. So notably, if this only attacks for 13, that means I get like four turns before this even gets to start doing damage to me. That basically negates all the stealth stacks right there. And at 22, this is an embarrassment of a fight. Okay. So, do we have the resources to upgrade a second Awake? Eh, it's maybe not necessary. Preserved Thorns, on the other hand, is really good here. So the turn that you draw it, the following turn is plus three, and any time you draw a sting in the future, it's going to replace itself the following turn, and this also triggers encant-based stuff. Preserved Thorns is one of the few non-restore cards that I tend to pick up in this strategy. All right, is something like a Glacial Seal necessary to win the run? No, and in fact, it's probably bad to pick it up. You might think, I'm encanting a lot, that will clearly be good. But what happens if the top floor in the final flight fight is a small floor? Then you get one less turn to set up and prepare. I would just skip this. Like, cards like these are fine, but they're non-priority units and they might cost you two ember. We're just going to skip that. Okay, it's probably finally time to do some upgrading to our Siren. If you recall, we have not yet upgraded this unit. We are playing with just our champion and an unupgraded unit that we got from Circle 1. Just kind of let that sink in for a minute. Okay. Now we have the question of like, how picky do I want to be with my units here? I get three up upgrade slots because of the Pyrestone housing. <laughs> I don't think I am going to go to another Merchant of Steel. Like, the Merchant of the Magic and Hellbent last floor is really powerful, and I want to go to this Merchant of Magic. So I want some combination of three upgrades on this floor. One HP upgrade so that, like, a random sweeper with rage doesn't, like, get me or something like that is probably fine. One plus ten upgrade is probably fine. I don't think Quick really does a lot. And then we'll reroll the shop. We'll accept like a plus 10 or something. You're really looking for multi-strike. Now, uh, the question that I ask myself is, do I accept large stone? Large stone means that in some fights I can't set up on the top floor, which means I lose setup time. But it's a higher DPS upgrade than strength stone. Given that this unit scales so well already, I think I will probably just take the Strength Stone. I don't think that 5 damage or that extra 40 life is going to matter. Nothing is getting through, and I would really like to just set up on the top floor. Alright, um, with 470 gold, I think this is also a fine time to just urge one more card here. Take another Frozen Lance or a Crypt Builder out of the deck. Both are bad, which is worse. Probably Crypt Builder. 
Like, Crit Builder is a free 60 damage sometimes, but our Ember is really taxed in the next fight, and we still have an unupgraded Restore. Alright, do we remove another? I'm looking to spend heavy and reroll this shop, then maybe spend heavy twice. Um, re removing here is acceptable, but I think I'm strong enough to wait a floor on that decision. This is a fight where we might just set up on bottom floor. Kind of depends on what turn one looks like. Alright, so we have one restore, which means we're basically getting through this statue this turn. We want to kill these things as frequently as possible so that our deck doesn't get junked up. I think it's going to be fine to set up on the bottom floor. It's not normal practice. But this is getting through that and letting us kill everything while also removing that, so it seems totally fine. The enemies in this fight are not particularly tough. These sorts of waves are the hardest waves. And unfortunately, we might not clear everything unless we get a little lucky with the token of a traitor hits. Alright. A unit got through. Unfortunately, we're not really good at killing that now. <laughs> so it may, uh... It may hang out for a little while. We know we're gonna restore. And we know we're gonna restore. And we know we're gonna do that. Do I want to draw this later? This kills that. And I'm going to get a kill on everything else. Yeah, let's just not redraw that. You're getting through, but you're going to end up actually healing the pyre. I think that's fine. Alright. So here is the issue with Wildwood Sap exemplified, right? Like, if this was a Restore card, we would have a much better turn as a whole. The Blood for Blood helps to mitigate a lot of the problems, though. You're going to hit the Pyre for 12, and the Pyre is going to heal back. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally good with where we're at. Alright. Not the best turn, but it's fine. We're getting kills on everything. I wanted to consume that last Frozen Lance. Alright, so we will cast an Awake. We will cast a Restore, and that's enough to get us there with two more spells to spare. So this is why you don't want to set up on the bottom floor. That fight was a little bit close, but if we had two more turns to prepare and stack regen, it's just not close at all. Alright, none of those cards say Restore on them. We skip, and we want more card draw. Easy. Alright, um, this is a very high yield path. This lets us upgrade our Awake while also getting an Artifact and a Cavern Event. Uh, Priory's Cloak and a Forgotten Name are both very good. I will take the one that gives us additional damage. Alright, we want a cost reduce on the Awake, and we would like to double stack it after that, if at all possible. Um, I have no more free card removes. I have to pay for card removes from here on out. How much are my card removes right now? 120? 
have one, two, three cards that I would like to remove. Mm. Just a billion surge stones this run. Normally I try to take these out completely. But I think I'm just going to accept that and re-roll this shop. I could permafrost one of them instead, like one of the crypt builders instead, but that's a lot of money to spend on something that's not vital to my strategy. I'm going to take the cavern event before making that decision. I've got a wildwood sap that I could do things with. Uh, it doesn't matter, this is 10 gold. We would not put any of those cards in our deck. Our deck's too good. So I can spend 140 gold to make a very good Wildwood Sap. But I don't really know that that's worth it. Like, that's a lot of gold. When... I would rather, like, double stack it if I hit two double stacks later. I think we're just going to reduce, like, yet another restore to just be free and call that good. Uh, maybe I'll purge a card. Nah, I can win the next fight without purging the card. I'll make that decision next floor once I've taken a look at everything. I should not need these 400 coins to win this fight. And there are still some way, some possible draws in the deck where I don't regen, or sorry, where I don't restore enough times. It would involve like hitting basically all of the Frozen Lances and Crypt Builders. But if I don't think I need the gold, I'm just not going to take it. I think we clear that trial. But like if I go into the next fight with 100 and 33 fire health or something very close to it. Uh, there's basically no way that we lose the run. Yeah, see, so turns that look like this are why you want these frozen lances absolutely out of the deck. I think it makes sense to Crypt Builder that. And then try to preserve Thorns. Kill this. And also sting down here and kill this so that Restore Stacks hit that directly. That might be better. At least the first one there. I probably need to scale this unit a little bit. 612, 180, we would like to hit this once. Okay, see this is this is what hands with this deck are supposed to look like. That's much better. respect that a bit. For those of you who are seeing the, uh, the restore base strategy for the first time, I hope you are enjoying how ridiculous it is to just heal everyone to death. I think at this point we can just scale there. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, we could have taken the trial. Is it just better to scale? I don't actually want to... Um, no, let's cast this here so I can, like, guaranteed kill this. Uh, we should have this thing very easily dead. 
Alright, and Sacred Rule against this boss, when it's dead, just click and turn. Notably here, because of the token of the traitor, every one of these that I play increases its attack by two. We still probably win the fight if I play all of those cards, but no need to tempt fate. Hands like that one are why I normally try to take card draw twice, by the way. Okay, second Preserved Thorns. Is the second Preserved Thorns still good? Um, second one's Borderline. It's very good, but then every once in a while you're going to end up with hands that have like five Preserved Thorns or something like that, and you really don't want those. I think I'm just going to go ahead and skip here. And none of those cards have the word Restore on them. We skip. All right, we're now going right for a couple more Merchant of Magic upgrades. And then some sort of duplication event. Let's just kind of take a look at both things here. Holdover. We have Holdover Awake being offered now. I don't think you need me to tell you that Sap Tap is good here. I think you figured that out. So with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, with seven re free restores, I think I can spend two ember every single turn on awake comfortably. Normally, if I just took card draw twice, I'd probably just put holdover on a restore here, but this is pretty darn good. We're going to get double stack after we reroll this shop and it'll totally dagger me, but that is what it is. All right. Are we going to duplicate that four ember every turn? I mean, that's certainly not bad. I get to hit it earlier. I get worse at removing the frozen lances from my deck. But I can take off time to do that. And then Sap Tap is just going to draw me into more free cards. Yeah, that's probably fine to duplicate. Now that probably means that I should buy another card remove. Um, this costs three. We're never playing this now unless we discard it. And now... <laughs> All of our Ember is being tied up every turn. This is a good upgrade. 60 plus 50 is exactly 110. I can take two upgrades. Ah, we're gonna have one Frozen Lance stuck in the deck. Ooh! I'm never going to cast it. No use in upgrading it. Let's just upgrade one of these. It, if I have to spend an ember to play it, might as well make it good. Okay. Um, we have an absurd deck going into the last fight. Like, we don't need to worry about the light wings. Or sorry, the shade wings. We're just going to murder everything. Alright, you remember that large stone I was talking about earlier and why I passed it? This is the exact scenario why we passed it. We get to draw an extra card here. Uh, I guess I can like actually play that on a creature that matters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yaw, 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 yaw. Um, at this point, I'm pretty confident that everything is just dead. I guess we can play that there. That floor can be spooky. But just, like, look at what we're doing here. One, two, three, four, five. We might want to consume that torch. Six. 
Yeah. Let's go seven, eight spells that turn. And that will be the norm from here on out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You, uh, you see what we're doing here? It's good. Notably, look at how much worse Restoration Detonation is than Restore. This just triggers the champ, whereas something like our base Restore, our starter card, is actually just better. Because it allows us to build up these regen stacks, uh, which are pretty darn good. So we just melted through that floor, even though Seraph dropped an additional friend there. It did not matter. Notice that the Restoration Detonations aren't actually dealing any additional damage other than just the Restore trigger, because we're at full health every turn. We have 100 life and 41 regen stacks already. So in a lot of runs, like, it doesn't even matter if you are facing something like the Cleanse Seraph, because this is the amount of regen that, that you can very consistently build up. It's just that good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Click on the cards, and everything dies. Oh man, we don't have that many cards this time. I wonder if we're going to make it. Will, 65 regen stacks and 145 on the back line, even though this is sat for 12, be enough? Let's watch it play out. Oh! Oh, it was enough? I'm totally surprised. So let's take a look at the debrief, and let's see how many cards I actually picked up over the course of this entire run. So, not counting the unit, because like, having one other additional unit is probably obligatory. I think we started with that. We picked up one, two, Three or five. We picked up five cards over the course of this run. We duplicated the Awake once, and we also duplicated our initial restores twice, I believe. You don't actually need to add that many cards to your deck to win a Covenant 25 run with Awoken Primary because restores are just so good on Explosive Sentient. So this is the strategy that Narnanian and I have been working on for, I don't know, the past week or so. We've been sending messages back and forth about it. Um, and I hope that you enjoy this strategy. Again, there is an article version that sort of goes into some details about some other things that I didn't talk about in this run. And while this video took about 50 minutes, know that if I was actually just playing this, I would cut 20 minutes off that time. So. Take that for what you will. If you are looking to get your first Covenant 25 win, this is probably the easiest way to do that. I'll see you all again soon.